Namaste. So last time we talked about the Lagna in the chart of the realized sage. So if you didn't see yesterday's video, take a look at it before you watch this one, then what we're saying here will make a lot more sense. First of all, I didn't get to sum up at the end of yesterday's video. So I want to just briefly sum up the position of Lagna in this chart. We see in this chart, the Lagna indicates a body huh, who is very strong. He has the support of the Navangsha chart, as we talked about last time. That gives him a lot of energy. Exalted Mars uh, energy permeates this whole chart, permeates this whole sage's body. and gives him tremendous strength, which is good because he had to endure a lot in his life. Anyway, the Lagna position gives special mystical powers. First of all, he's in the last nakshatra of the last sign, which means his business is just about finished in this world. This is his last birth. It also gives him clairaudience and clairsentience, which means that he gets to know things without any visible uh, sensory reasons for knowing it. Uh, in other words, he has some mystic power. He has some clairvoyance. Now, that doesn't mean he can, quote, read your mind or anything like that. But what it does mean is that he just somehow or other comes to know things. <laughs> but he's very emotionally detached. That's the meaning of the... Uh, this particular nakshatra, his heart is cool. Now this is a very, very good qualification for a sage. A sage should not be passionate. He should be cool. He should not get all fired up about mundane things, especially. And so we see that in this chart, the lagna is perfectly positioned for enlightenment and liberation. And it also makes him extremely intelligent and able to communicate. So this is, of course, the best thing for a teacher or guru to be able to articulate the ancient knowledge, the esoteric teaching. So now let's move on to the sun position. This sage has sun in Aquarius, nine degrees. Now, first of all, the mantra for the sun. Aum Grini Suryaya Namaha. And the meaning of the sun is the self. The bliss of the self is always with you, and you will find it for yourself if you seek it earnestly. O son of Bharata, the sun alone illuminates all this universe. Likewise, the living soul within the body illuminates the entire body by consciousness. So the sun is the indicator of the self, how one sees oneself and how others see him. And it also indicates intelligence, willpower. And let me read the, the whole list here. It indicates authenticity, integrity, creative authority, sparkling intelligence, brilliance, warmth of heart, light radiator, willpower, decision-making, and flamboyance. Surya's portfolio matches the English vocabulary of auto, self, authorship, authority, autocracy, autonomy. The eyes, ESP, especially the third eye, and the I, the ego or feeling of self. 
I am. The sun symbolizes the center of all things. Politics, theater, royalty, celebrity, pageantry, poetry, ceremony, entertainment, literature, dance, performance art, children, romance, courtly love, games, gambling, strokes of genius, creativity, applause, confidence, solar power, bright lights, divine intelligence, self-knowledge, ego, individuality, and independence, nonconformity, uniqueness, center of attention, confidence, and brilliant red things. So we see that the sun symbolizes the center of the being, the consciousness, the feeling of I am. Now the quality of this feeling determines the level of awareness, the level of conscious evolution of the being. So if one thinks, I am the body, <laughs> this is animal consciousness, very low on the scale for a human being. But one who thinks, I am the universal consciousness, Brahman, that pervades all and is without boundaries or limitations, well, this is the highest thing. Now, what about this person? Well, the sun is in Aquarius in the 12th house. So Surya in Kumbha, which are the Sanskrit terms for the same thing, is called Arka, the bright center of network systems, a challenging placement. Sparkling, unique Surya must express his personal, political, creative, dramatic genius within a strict system-regulated transactional network. So what this means is that this person expresses their unique individuality through a system. Huh? They're not just giving their own personal opinion, but they are like a presenter or a representative of a comprehensive system of knowledge. It's not just I think or I feel. So this particular enlightened being is an exponent of the Vedas. So everything he says, everything he does is grounded in Vedic scriptures. And this came not easily, but after a long struggle and many attempts going all over the world, huh, because Pisces and uh, his placement of his uh, Lagna also give the wanderer not one who can be in one place or one position or have one view his whole life. He has to wander, he has to explore. That's a better word. <laughs> I'm not lost, I'm exploring. <laughs> and after extensive exploration, he found the wellspring of knowledge in the Vedas and he made it his own. He made himself into the exponent of the Vedic path. Although neither compassionate nor needy, splendid Surya is friendly. He may become a bright, self-radiating light, shining toward the mass collectivity. Sparkling, self-directed Surya occupies airspace Kumbha, ruled by Saturn. Now, Saturn is an enemy of Surya. Saturn is dark and heavy, and Surya is bright and light. So there's always going to be this kind of conflict between darkness and light until this individual passes uh, Saturn's tests. Saturn is a guru, a teacher, just like Jupiter. Boris, but whereas Jupiter is like a sat guru, always bright and positive, Saturn is the disciplinarian, huh? like Shiva, dark and hard and always testing the aspirant. So in, a, in the same way, this person went through a lot of trouble in their early life and they will be, but people with sun in Aquarius go through a lot of tests in their early life. They're frequently bullied and so on because they're different. They have a different view, a much more advanced view than the ordinary people around them. So of course, 
children are monsters and they tend to bully anybody that's not like them, just like chickens. Huh? <laughs> so once this being matures and finds his center, finds his real self, his real identity, then Saturn say, okay, and you pass. <laughs> you get now to be who you really are, who you were always made to be. In personal relationships, Surya Kumbha may add a brilliant view of future potentials while simultaneously neglecting the pedestrian realities of the current situation. They are not ideologues, but rather goal-oriented teleologues. Their values are derived from whatever is conducive to their aim. So in other words, someone with the sun in Aquarius although they may utilize a framework, a formal system of ideas for their expression, they don't feel that they are bound by it. Huh? They are detached. They are only bound by their own goals and what is necessary to obtain them. And if a particular system of knowledge serves them in that endeavor, fine. They will uh, link themselves with it, but if it then fails them, they are very quick to trash it and go on to the next thing. Knowledge of higher worlds, prone to the big picture viewpoint. Electromagnetic genius and community network hero, often a scientist, mathematician, systems philosopher, or social participation activist less capable of interpersonal engagement and more distinguished by their self-certain entitlement to free thinking and free action. So in other words, this person <laughs> is not bound. He's free because of his uh, son in Kumba, Aquarius. His, this is the basis of his intelligence, is that from the very beginning, I'm a free agent. I can do whatever I like. I'm completely free. So this can lead to neglecting, you know, the mundane affairs like washing the dishes or sweeping the floor. <laughs> but on the other hand, it gives them a universal view, which is very helpful for understanding the real problems of life, like how do we get out of suffering or how do we stop birth and death? So there's lots and lots more, lots more. Uh, people with Sun in Aquarius, and especially here in the 12th house, tend to have very cool hearts. They're not passionate people. They need sun for health. And so living in a tropical climate or having access to uh, an outdoor environment is very important for them. So let's go on and take a look at the sun in the 12th house. Native sees the bright center of the cloistered privacy drama. Gifted with imaginative intelligence, Surya in 12 sees what is happening in invisible realms behind the scenes. Confident clairsentience and imaginative brilliance, a central role in dream worlds a central figure upon the bridge to the ancestors, a bright icon of contemplative thought, private spiritual guidance, center stage agent of ashrams, bedroom and privacy and retreat. Intelligence focused mainly upon the unseen behind the walls, invisibility, a foreigner ego identified with distant and imaginary lands of origin. So, <laughs> This is another indication in this chart. And as I said, it takes two or three or even more indications in a chart to um, make something a major feature of a person's nature or being. So here we have again, clairsentience. Sees what's going on behind closed doors in the invisible world. Huh? Someone who is a guide on the path from this world to the next world. And it turns out this person has a great talent 
with taking people through the experience of death and can guide them because he is at home in both worlds. Huh? He has one foot in the material world, and the other foot in the spiritual world. So it's easy for him <clears throat> to be like the boatman, the shepherd who guides the soul on this journey after death. Oh, and there's so much more. I don't know if I can even cover it. <laughs> Radiates expansive, generous, like a guru, personal charisma, like Surya, the sun, in public ritual and private guidance roles. Spiritual guidance, prayer and confidential activities, foreign life in distant lands, Imagination, dreams, bedroom, cloister, or enclosure. Creative, center stage specialties. Diviner, trail guide, ferryman, shepherd, interpreter, conveyor, meditator, bridge watcher. A somewhat ironic placement because Surya in 12 indicates that the father is often unavailable or invisible. Yet, when sparkling Surya's Rashi is strong, and the ruler well-placed, one exhibits brilliance in dealing with distant worlds, confident in private, sequestered, or secluded political environments. So in other words, this person is like a master of the invisible world. This is a very practical thing. It's not just theoretical. It's not just about beliefs. It's someone who can actually help you to explore and realize the inner worlds. So this is really the nature of guru. You know, nowadays we have a lot of people posing as guru and even making a good business out of it, just based on their external social abilities. They have the right look, they have the right way of speaking, maybe they're born in a middle or upper middle class or even upper class family. But this person comes from a very low-class family and doesn't have great looks or anything like that. So he is often overlooked by people who are looking for flash and flair. Uh, they're, they're looking for something, you know, uh, more atmospheric or more sentimental than the actual abilities needed to ferry the soul to the higher worlds. But this person has that ability. It's just very difficult to recognize a person like that because of the dominance of materialistic philosophy and schooling and so on in society today. So what we see in this picture is a neglected uh, genius, a neglected guru, uh, a very powerful person in his own way, but one who doesn't display it, who isn't flashy about it, who, uh, however, in private, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, can offer tangible guidance uh, in spiritual matters and be a real inspiration, a real teacher to those who approach him on a personal one-to-one -one basis. So this is really the essence of Guru Upanishad. Come close and sit down. Huh? The Guru doesn't give his most powerful teachings in a group setting. He can't. He has to deal with the individual person and speak directly to their situation in a language that they can understand. And this person, this uh, Rishi, or uh, sage, has all these qualities in his very birth chart from the word go. <laughs> so, Om Tat Sat, Om Shakti Om.